Hi, this is Andy on my channel, West Valley 411. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to be restoring the solid oak front door. And I'm going to show you all the steps and materials needed. Briefly, first, we're going to use a stripper to get off all the material. We're going to sand and repair some of the damaged areas, and then we're going to refinish it. So let me grab the camera and I'll show you the condition of the door and how we got to this point. We took it off the hinges and set it up on some buckets. Um, and before we get started, we will take off the hardware and clean that up, as well as uh, the bottom area threshold of the door. And in terms of what we're going to be using, first we'll take some of our uh, chip brushes and uh, clean strip, uh, premium stripper, and get that uh, old material off. It's going to be somewhat challenging because of some of the molding on the door here, but we'll show you some of those steps. Then we're going to uh, repair some of the damaged areas with some plastic wood. We'll use uh, a good coat of wood stain to uh, bring that uh, luster or the wood back, and then we'll finish it off with some polyurethane finish. Probably three coats with some sanding in between. Now this door faces east. So when that sun rises, the bottom portion of the door, um, well, here's the top portion of the door. And you can see this is the original color here that gets covered up with the door molding. But still, this part up here that does get some reflective sun is still in pretty good shape. We have a crack right here. This molding here on the side has, has lifted up somewhat. Hopefully you can see that move. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to put a brad in that or if we'll be able to uh, return that to its original position. But going further down the door, as the angle of the sun hits it in the summertime, you can see here the old polyurethane finish has really come off and has exposed some of the wood um, here in the middle band. It's, it's much worse. Um, and uh, this probably should have been done uh, several years ago, but um, nonetheless, it's ready to be refinished. And then again, at the bottom of the door here, there's quite a few damaged areas, but um, not really too many cracks that we'll be needing to refill. So let's look at uh, some of our other equipment. We've got 120 grit sandpaper that we're going to be used, using on a uh, random orbital sander. Here's the uh, ironing board shape to allow us to get into some of those corners. But, you know, again, on the molding, it's a little more challenging um, to sand. Fortunately, on the top portion, there won't be much to do. We've got some uh, 120 grit um, sponges that we'll be using here. And then uh, probably a little finer 150 and maybe 180 grit that we'll be using. So that's the overall plan. In order to keep the video reasonably short, I will... Uh, show you intermittently some of the steps, but you know, you don't need to see me uh, uh, using a screwdriver to remove these um, as well as on the other parts of the hardware. So that's the overall plan. You've seen it in its worst shape and uh, we're going to get started and please post any questions that you have at the end and uh, this is a do-it-yourself project. I'm not a professional furniture restorer, so hopefully this will help you answer some questions and um, have the confidence to, to do the job yourself. All right, here we go. The other thing there that I wanted to point out is I put some weights on this trim here because uh, it had lifted up and I wanted to see if it would reshape itself. So. Um, likely not, and we'll have to do something else, but I thought it'd be worth a shot. All right, let's take another look at these panels before we get started. This first one, really not in too bad a shape at the top. 
And as with the others, there's quite a bit of sun damage towards the, the bottom of each panel. So the one in the middle is the worst, and then the one on the right is actually not too bad. So let's uh, just get set up here. Spread this around with our It's important to keep that wet. It's been 15 minutes since we put the stripper on and quite a bit has lifted off as you can see. A lot of that really absorbs into the wood. So we'll go with the grain. And that looks pretty good. A little tougher to see this middle section I think. We're going to add some more because I don't think we're getting complete removal. And then this trim area here, a little more challenging to get that off. So we're going to add a little bit more stripper. It's kind of dry in some places. And then we'll complete this panel. All right, it's pretty clear that any areas that were not wet with stripper are a little hard to get off. So we're going to do another coat. Um, going down the rail here, you can see we were successful in, in getting off quite a bit of the finish, but there's a lot left there. So while the directions say put it on and walk away, uh, you really got to do your best to uh, keep it wet to the extent you can handle the fumes. So this actually is best done outside. All right, after an hour and a half of working on this panel only, you can see a difference in sheen between these two and this panel, but I still have more work to do because you can still see some, some sheen on the upper part, and I can still see a bunch of finish in here and here, but the wood grain itself, even though it's darker, I do not see much reflection. And going up, you'll see, for instance, right, right here, you'll notice there's not as much sheen in that one section. And 
I just, you know, after two plus coats of the stripper, I've got to add more. There's an unbelievable uh, polyurethane finish on this door, and it's just going to take a lot of work. So I'm going to work on this panel again later. I just worry about getting too wet. Um, this looks pretty dark in here, and... I, I don't want to lift up any of the wood grain. I, I think this could be some sun damage in here that we'll have to sand out. Um, or it just could be a little more wet than we wanted it to be. So here's a super close up. And um, overall, it's coming off, but if you look at the, the facets on this molding, it's, it's uh, quite a job to, to get in all the grooves. So we'll keep working at it. So now we've completed the work on two of the panels and the molding and it's become clear that the clean strip works great on the dark wood but it's really challenging to get it off of the uh, lighter wood here after several attempts. Um, I have used the toothbrush here to mechanically work it in. Um, it's best not to use a metal scraper because you'll gouge. And so we're going to continue doing the rest of the panels. And it's become clear that we need to use a mechanical means to get some of this finish off of the, the lighter wood. Um, so we'll use our, our random orbital sander to do that. And... Um, probably some manual sanding here for some of the lower areas. So that's just the nature of what we're trying to do is get off the old uh, polyurethane. And unless we get it completely off, I don't think um, we'll get as favorable of a result. So we'll continue that on the other panels. Um, and then we'll come back and kind of summarize. I expect on, on some of the, uh, the panels here, this will come off really easy. Obviously, it's flaking. Um, these are flat, so you can see the uh, polyurethane has been chipping off the dark wood um, kind of around where the sun hit it. So with that in mind, we'll keep it going. On this last section, I covered the panel with plastic bags and I'm going to leave it there an extended amount of time. This way I really want to see if allowing the stripper to soak into that white wood is going to help because that'll reduce the amount of sanding that we need to do quite a bit. But you can see in this middle panel the polyurethane is off of the brown wood but didn't didn't really get much of that other coating off which is disappointing so let's try this and see what happens all right i have some great news we did a little experiment today applying a very thick layer of clean strip and then covering it with plastic just to thin Home Depot bag, leaving it there for about six hours. And it was uh, about 60 degrees today, and it's currently about 40 degrees. And look at that. Even though it's a little bit dry, you can see it just really came up on all of the wood. There's a couple of uh, areas here that I probably had 
a smaller amount of stripper on and this actually took the color off the bag right here but overall everything came off we'll finish up the uh the trim here tomorrow and then we'll apply the same technique to uh the rest of the door but i'm super happy that uh even though this was not in the instructions it uh it certainly was much much more effective and um you know allowed us to take it off in basically one coat and you can see here this wood is not as uh wet or dark as the other two panels were at the bottom although there was a little bit more sun damage in those areas so wow i'm, I'm really pleased with that all right, we've got all the panels finished. Stripper's been applied. There are some areas where the plastic is still adhering to the wood, and that's probably because there's nothing to peel off in these areas. If you contrast that with what we found here, the polyurethane is pushing up the plastic, and you can see there it's ready to come off. That is really nice. It's practically coming up on its own. That is a great result. So covering it certainly helped a lot. So we'll finish removing that and we'll move on to the other panels. It's been a little challenging getting the finish off these long solid oak panels. I think that factory uh, finish, especially in areas that are not exposed to the sun, are uh, really adhered to the wood. So um, in these areas, we just had to really pull the uh, stripper. And in fact, um, some of the uh, finish comes off um, kind of nicely, but most of these are repeat applications. And then you can see on this other side here, alongside the right border that was protected by the door molding, um, it's not even touching it. And that's the, the second application. So down here in the corner, you can almost see a perfect uh, line. Um, this was covered up by the threshold and this was the door molding. Um, stripper's not really having much of an impact. I tried sanding very lightly to try to get a little bit more bite, but um, no progress yet. So we'll just keep trying. All right, we're working our way around to the top of the door. And this is the first coat on this section. So what I found is not only using the scraper, but a toothbrush helps provide the friction that you need to get the material off. All right, we are almost done with the first part of this project. That is stripping, then we'll move on to sanding and finally putting on the new polyurethane finish. But I just wanted to mention this toothbrush has been very valuable in getting into the little crevices to take off the uh, old finish. And I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse from this side. You can see that sheen right here from the old finish. Most of these areas we've applied the stripper uh, at least twice and there's still some small, smaller areas remaining. Um, the same is true along the side and the top and you can see there's still some areas, probably part of the one of the layers of the old finish that was applied by the manufacturer here on this side. It's a little heavier. So 
Just make sure you keep that stripper applied and wet. You can cover it up in areas that are especially tough. And uh, usually after about an hour or two, that's adequate for uh, most of the action of the stripper. It's almost like Rice Krispies in a lot of cases. It's the snap, crackle, pop. You can hear it being lifted off as the volatile compounds in the chemicals uh, have an effect. And even down here where the kick plate bar threshold was located. There's my assistant doing a quality check and there's also here where the lock set was attached. That was the most difficult area to get off so looks like we're in pretty good shape. You can't approach this part of a project without the proper safety equipment. So you're going to need goggles, you're going to need gloves, um, you're going to need a respirator that is equipped with a cartridge to handle volatile vapors. These are hazardous and a product like Clean Strip has methanol, xylene, and acetone and you don't want to be breathing that in because of the potential ill effects such as headaches, nausea, eventually bronchitis. And we're going to be working pretty close to our, our door. So um, it needs to be well ventilated as well. We're going to be opening up the, uh, the door here. And the way that we're going to apply it is we're just going to put it on smaller areas, about a square foot at a time. I'm going to be using these fine sanding pads to get it um, into the cracks and crevices and then we're going to be using some old socks to uh, wipe it up and make sure as we move throughout the project that we're continuing to use a clean pad to remove um, any remaining uh, afterwash. So it's a very volatile compound. Everything goes up in the air and you want to make sure that you're safe. So let's get started. All right, it's pretty easy to put on this respirator. And we're going to be going with the grain. All right, you can see how quickly that process goes. That afterwash is highly volatile. It dries really quickly. So I like to sort of rub it in, rub it off, and then clean it up. The polyurethane finish has been completely removed now. We've applied afterwash, and we're almost ready to 
start sanding. We're going to fill some of the uh, damaged areas here at the very bottom of the door. There's some other areas that we're going to have to keep an eye on, possibly fill, but we're definitely going to take care of some of those with sanding. And surprisingly, after having weights on the trim molding, look at that. It's completely return to its original state. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole from this side of the molding. It's going to go into the other and the idea is it's going to help prevent the lift up of that molding again. So I've got a, a drill here with a bit and we're gonna find out what size uh, nail to use. These are small brads. Um, this is the drill and extension we're gonna use. So let's try a sample hole. Okay. So this is our this is our smaller brad. Goes in that hole pretty easily and comes out. Here's a little bit larger. This one might be just it doesn't want to go in, but it does have the right length. So I think what we'll do is we'll try to make this hole a little bit bigger by using the same bit. Let's see if that fits. It's pretty snug. So we're going to have to work with that to make sure we get the right size hole into this molding because we don't want it to split and I don't want there to be excessive pressure. We just want it to prevent from lifting up. So we'll play around with that and uh, probably what we'll do is this brad is not going to go in all the way. We'll end up cutting off the head there and then tapping the rest of it in and covering it up with some some uh, wood putty. Okay I marked a spot on this drill with tape that's going to be our depth and I put a mark here on the molding that's going to be our angle and we're going to want to go down just a little bit into the wood so I'm going to try, I'm going to try not to block your view but let's give it a shot. This is 530 seconds. This brad is going to fit in that hole nicely. We're going to fill it. Let me get some light over here. Keep the camera. So oh, it's a little hot right there. So you can see 
we've got pretty good penetration angle with our drill. See if that'll focus for me. Okay, so we'll cut this brad off to the right length. And looks like we got a good angle on it. It's not coming out anywhere. And that should, should stay. All right, that did the trick. We'll do the same thing on the other side and keep making progress. These are pretty tight quarters, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, so here's the plan. We're going to use this little metal rod to push some plastic wood uh, light oak filler into the hole. Then we're going to hammer in one of these uh, brads and use a full-length brad to countersink it. We'll let that dry out, and then we'll put some more uh, plastic wood on it to cover up the hole. It is time to start sanding, and I'm going to be using a 5-inch uh, random orbital sander for these longer panels. We've got a little palm sander here for the narrower ones, and then uh, to get into the corners here. Um, we're going to have to use uh, some sheet sandpaper and these blocks to get down into the uh, little recessed areas between the molding between the uh, molding here and the panel and then we'll also use some blocks to get uh, in between uh, the two panels so we'll start with 120 see how that works we're going to be sanding at a rate of one inch per second with the orbital sander we don't want to leave any marks on the wood and i will be using an n95 because that'll filter out the dust Hearing protection is probably a good idea because it does get kind of noisy. So let's get set up and get started. There's a lot of molding on this door and we got to be careful not to flatten out any of those surfaces. It's going to require a lot of hand sanding. So uh, let's get going. All right, that was a partial loop around the track. That was 15 minutes, and we have several hours of sanding to do. So you get the idea. After four hours of sanding, the door is looking really good. We've gotten the six panels here completed, along with the side panels and the top. We did have to reduce the sandpaper grit down to 80 to take off some of the sun damage on the lower part of the door and you can see here this panel here is looking a lot nicer a little bit more work to do um, i'm probably going to have to sand the areas here between the panels by hand because i just don't have anything electric that's that small i need something about two inches and then on the molding, you can see these areas are still pretty darkened, um, meaning we haven't sanded them yet, and uh, that's going to take a lot of manual work. So we'll continue with the sanding. I do want to point out with the uh, random orbital sander, I did find this little plastic uh, ruler that I've used up against the side of the molding to prevent any grooves from being created and you can see it even penetrated this a little bit but along the top here 
there's a couple of areas that uh, I got a little bit close to the molding, which is not all that unusual, um, but just make sure you protect those areas. I've spent about an hour just sanding the molding on this panel here, and we've got five more panels to go. You might be able to see a change in the sawdust color coming out of these corners here because it was uh, really discolored from the sun and from the polyurethane stain. But I wanted to point out um, getting one of these uh, spongy sanding blocks is really helpful because it takes the shape of... Uh, let me try it around this side. Because it takes the shape of that round molding as you press down on it. And so when you put the sandpaper on, sorry, I got some shadows there. It kind of does the same thing. And this has been, this has been a real big help. So now what I'm gonna do is round off this block on the top. And even though it's a hard uh, piece of wood so that I can insert it like this into the shape of that uh, convex uh, molding there because I can get the faces, the bottom and the sides, but you just can't get that ridge there. So we'll work on that some more. Um, Overall, I've had to reduce down another grid of sandpaper. I'm at 60 right now, and unfortunately, I didn't clear out the sandpaper there, and you can see a groove that was created right here that I'm going to have to lift out. have to sand this cross-grain because that's the only way to tackle that, and then uh, we'll smooth it back out going this direction. But look at those corners. It's almost impossible to get that out. You just have to fold the sandpaper in half and use uh, like one inch wide uh, strips. Here's a sanding block that we're gonna use to get into that curved part of the molding. A little more challenging to do this with one hand, but Let's do it from this side so that you get the idea. Then we're just going to sand that back and forth. Changing the angle a little here and there. Takes a little more work, but you get the idea. I've completed the sanding with six degree paper and five out of the six panels, and this one right here is still remaining. Let's take a closer look. As soon as we're done with 60 grit, we'll continue with 120, see what it looks like. Might go to uh, 200 grit, and then uh, we'll start staining. So uh, the panel here you can see is pretty dark. It's got sun damage and um, some stain and probably some polyurethane mixed in there that didn't come out with the stripper. So it's really, see how close we can get. It's a real challenge to stain, excuse me, it's a challenge to sand in these corners because you can't really get up a whole lot of torque and it's uh, very tough to get in there. But uh, you can see we did a fairly good job. Um, easy to do the flat surfaces all the way around. It's just these rounded 90 degree angles, convex, concave kind of molding. So. Um, we'll wrap this part up here. It's the last one. Then we'll go over it again with uh, another grit. And then we'll start staining after that. 
All right, we are done sanding. Hallelujah. I've spent way over 100 hours on this project so far between the polyurethane stripper and sanding. And we did a combination of 60 and 80 grit, a combination of uh, 150 and 180 grit, and then I finalized with 220. So overall, we've got all of the stripper out. We got all the damaged wood parts out. And now it's just a matter of some final touch-ups. I do want to show you over here, there were some exposed metal uh, brads that were put in with an air gun that started to uh, appear. And those are really hard to cover up because it's a completely flat surface. So we'll clean up a little bit more in the corners and uh, let's take a look at it from this side and then we'll start staining. That'll have to be part two of this video project because I'm out of storage on my phone and I've got to uh, upload this um, video. So thanks for watching. The wood looks beautiful. It's not perfect uh, just because of the damage and it is 25 years old. So um, I'm happy with this side. In part two of the video, I'm going to show you the underside of the door, which is the inside. And we'll do our best to match the stain. Um, got some techniques for staining that I think will be helpful, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.